We are back, baby. Welcome in, everybody, to the first Madden 21 series here on that franchise guy, a brand new realistic rebuild of the Atlanta Falcons. This is going to be a super fun rebuild. Please do hit that like button down below for this video and every installment of the series. This is not going to be quite like our other rebuilds. We have a team with some certain expectations. We have a coach opening uh, almost immediately here. But we have veterans like Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, certainly don't want the back ends of their career to go to waste. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we have definitely work to do really across the board, but some real stars, some of the top guys at their position, Grady Jarrett and Deion Jones, certainly in their prime, guys to build around, uh, but absolutely uh, a defense that needs work and an offense that needs some filling out as well. So it's going to be a really fun rebuild. I'm really excited. Before we get started, I want to go through the house rules here. So per usual, this is a realistic rebuild. We will be doing realistic moves only, realistic trades, free agency signing, really only doing things that I can picture uh, a team doing in real life. That may also include manipulating development traits, uh, depending on how the game handles that kind of stuff. We will, of course, be using my own custom roster, that is TFG Real 2021, and my custom draft class for the first season. We will be going four full seasons after 2020 and simulating the remainder of the 2020 season here in this episode. As always, there are questions about what kind of sliders I'm using, so I will just scan through these so you guys can check those out. These are uploaded on Xbox, the gameplay sliders as well. And then we are going to be using the new feature for dev trait regression. We're going to see how it goes here in this series. And I have those set at 40 X Factors, 90 superstar uh, players, and 500 star players. That is uh, just kind of consistent with my dev trait change suggestions sheet that uh, I will link in the description down below if you have not checked that out already. So because of our starting point here, I'm not gonna do what we normally do where we really go through the roster right away. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of change in this off season. So we'll kind of reassess the state of the roster once we get through the regular season here. But there are a few orders of business to take care of before we do start simulating here. So first off, I wanna set our focus players. Uh, I had XP set to zero to sim up to this point. So guys have not really developed. Uh, I want to focus on some of the young guys here as we wrap up the season. So definitely Chris Lindstrom, who's actually had a really good year. This guy's a top 15 pick for the Falcons last year at guard. He's a future star for us. Would be nice to get Marlon Davidson some action down the stretch here. He has that hidden development, has not seen much playing time. And then I'm going to keep working on Calvin Ridley here, who's having an outstanding season. Uh, and might have to be our number one receiver of the future. Uh, for As far as training goes, I am just going to simulate every week so that we are on the same playing field as the rest of the teams. And then we have our scouting. None of these points have been spent quite yet. We should be looking at a top 10 pick. Uh, so let's start by scouting these top quarterbacks. This is obviously going to be something we think about here with Matt Ryan in here. Is he going to be potentially on the move this offseason? That's going to be in the hands of whatever new head coach we decide to go with. And then I'm going to start in on some of these mid-round running backs. Running back is actually a pretty big need for us, uh, even if it's not a, a premium position. Uh, might be something we look at there uh, late day two. Then lastly, renegotiations. Is there anyone here that we want to make sure we bring back? Definitely some big names ready to hit the market here. Alex Mack, Keanu Neal, Demonte Kazee. These are all pretty good players. I uh, might want to think about some of them. As for the rest of these guys, pretty low level, kind of league minimum veteran kind of guys. I think we're probably okay letting all these guys go. But as far as the starters here, Todd Gurley, Alex Mack, I'm prepared to let them go. We actually have a long-term plan at center there uh, with Hennessy, who was a mid-round pick for the Falcons. Really good athlete there. Uh, so I'm prepared to let these guys go. Todd Gurley definitely on the back swing of his career. Uh, and then we're losing a bunch of nickel defenders here. Denard, Kazee, and Keanu Neal. 
Keanu Neal wants a five-year contract. I don't hate Keanu Neal. He's definitely not the best cover player. And Demonte Kazee is a nice, flexible free safety. Uh, but they both are asking for quite a decent chunk of money. I don't think that um, it's smart to pay these guys when we don't really know what our new coaching situation is going to be quite yet. Don't want to hamstring them with big contracts like that. Uh, so I think it might be best just to let these guys go and play this thing out. Uh, potentially thinking about a, a franchise tag for Keanu Neal maybe, but that is obviously something that the new coach is going to have to decide. So there's actually no contracts uh, that we need to do at the moment. The only other thing really would be uh, to get Marlon Davidson some more playing time here. Someone we're focusing on and want to be a piece of the future here, a second round pick. So we're going to slide him up over Tyler Davison. But other than that, man, we should be good to simulate to the playoffs, which we obviously will not be attending, but nothing else for us to do. Let's see how we finish up the season and where we're going to be picking in this draft. So lucky us. My goodness. What a dream finish for the Falcons. Wow. We only win one more game, but more importantly, the Jags pick up some wins um, and some other teams here pick up some wins as well. So we actually finish with the second overall pick. That is just a dream for the Falcons and the Falcons fans down here. Let's take a peek at the new playoff bracket that EA added. How did the NFC play out? The Washington football team picks up the NFC least. The Chicago Bears go on a run with that defense. The Packers crumble and fall apart. The Bucks picking up that one bye, and the Chiefs finish strong. And then uh, the Titans close down the AFC South. The Ravens miss the playoffs. So there's your playoff picture. We'll take uh, another look at this once we get further down the road. But it is definitely time to decide on our next head coach. And getting that number two overall pick is going to make this a very appealing job. You have a lot of veterans on the roster. You got a beautiful new stadium. You have a, an organization that's had a lot of success. It's not like we're talking about the Jets or the Jags job, job opening here. You even have a veteran quarterback in Matt Ryan to work with and potentially build uh, a younger quarterback, uh, quarterback behind him. And getting that number two pick, it really opens the doors and, and gets you thinking, what do you want to do here? It's, it's such a big decision that's going to change the course of this entire rebuild here. So two big decisions. You got coach and quarterback. Um, there's, there's a couple great options I see from a coaching perspective. Two guys that I would really like to target that I think we have the appeal to go after as one of the top job openings. And that is Joe Brady, a young, up-and-coming offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers, won that uh, championship with Joe Burrow. He has worked in this NFC South, worked under Sean Payton, has now worked uh, for the Carolina Panthers, has lots of inside information for us. It would be a huge get to steal him from the Carolina Panthers. That, to me, would be uh, an ideal scenario. Another option uh, would potentially be Eric Bieniemy, offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the reason I do consider him uh, a secondary option there is uh, he has a lot of experience with a mobile, uber-athletic quarterback there with Patrick Mahomes. That is not necessarily what we have in Matt Ryan, but if we were to go, say, the Justin Fields route in the draft, Eric Bieniemy would be an awesome candidate to develop that young coach and quarterback relationship. But to me, the, the biggest two nods here are that uh, Joe Brady has all of that experience in this division. He can give us a leg up over the Saints and Panthers, who are going to be two of our top. Uh, I mean, really, it's a competitive division all around, but that will give, a, give us a huge advantage, especially stealing him from Carolina. But also, uh, we don't know who our quarterback is going to be at this moment. And we do have Matt Ryan, who I think would actually have a lot of success with Joe Brady. And that gives us a lot more flexibility to not pigeonhole our entire offseason into this idea that we have to pair Eric Bieniemy with Justin Fields. Hell, we aren't even so sure Justin Fields at this point in time is the second best quarterback in this draft. So it's going to be Joseph Brady, just 31 years old 
almost the same age that Sean McVay was when the Rams surprisingly hired him, but to me this is a no-brainer. He has proven everything we need to see uh, working under Sean Payton uh, winning that championship with an explosive offense a creative offense with Joe Burrow at LSU and taking it to Carolina and showing success right away with Teddy Bridgewater in that group so welcome to Atlanta Joe Brady we're hoping for an illustrious long career here really excited about this hire and then on the defensive side of the ball we're actually going to stick with Raheem Morris who uh, took over as the uh, interim head coach and did a great job losing for us and getting us that number two pick but uh, in all seriousness uh, in real life he has he's done a pretty good job stepping in there so uh, Raheem Morris who was a former head coach and uh, is still pretty young and he was actually the head coach of the Bucks, so that kind of rounds out the uh, NFC South nepotism. We've got uh, former coaches covered for the Bucks, Panthers, and Saints uh, between our offensive and defensive mind here. So really excited about this coaching staff. I, I think this is a brilliant way to move forward for the Falcons. So we're going to go ahead and get to the Super Bowl week here. Uh, check out what Madden's predicting for the rest of this season and then get into a, a big off season of huge franchise changing decisions. So it is gonna be those uh, two top seeds there, the Chiefs and the Bucks advancing to the Super Bowl. The Bears make it all the way to the NFC Championship. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the Chiefs in this one. The Chiefs actually having success in Madden for the first time maybe ever. We do have just a, a couple orders of business here, starting with the scouting. I want to shift our attention to the defensive side of the ball. So with Raheem Morris staying in here, uh, I, I, he has a lot of experience running that sort of Seattle three defense. Now he's mixed it up quite a bit uh, in 2020, uh, but definitely want to kind of go back to the roots here a little bit. Uh, play foundational football, play fast, simple schematics, uh, kind of do a little bit of what we've seen from, say, the Colts or the 49ers uh, who have really turned their defenses around just uh, simplifying things and playing really fast, knowing your responsibility. Uh, going to get back to the basics a little bit, um, but going to hopefully provide uh, Morris some good defensive talent from a front office perspective to get it done this time. So anyway, let's go ahead to the offseason. I'm going to go ahead and predict a, a Chiefs Super Bowl here over the Bucks. And the Bucks, Tom Brady gets his seventh freaking ring. My goodness. Take a look at the retirement menu. Uh, Big Ben is going to hang it up, as is Drew Brees opening the door in this division a little bit. Colin Kaepernick retires. Alex Smith retires. Phillip Rivers retires. A lot of these veteran quarterbacks. Andrew Whitworth with that ACL injury is going to hang it up. Uh, Adrian Peterson, Hall of Fame career. He's going to hang it up. We will lose Alex Mack. And no, Matt Schaub, the backup, retires. Clay Matthews retires. I actually like this retirement menu. It's a, a good glimpse at what's going on around the league head coach Pete Carroll and Andy Reid retire and ignore that Raheem Morris retiring that is uh, just because we changed the character not so sure about that Andy Reid retiring there EA we're just gonna have to pretend that something tragic happened and uh, he had to just let it go Pete Carroll may be a little bit more believable but still Anyway, lots to do this week. We got some contracts to maybe take a second look at now that we have Joe Brady back here and uh, upgrades. Let's do this first. Not going to do every single one of these, but maybe some of these players we want to um, you know, focus on some schematic things with Joe Brady. Let's improve Jaden Graham's blocking backup tight end. An upgrade for the punter, Sterling Hoff Reichter, a uh, seventh round pick for the Falcons last year. Not bad for a young punter. Caleb McGarry at right tackle. His overall is down because of the rough season. Uh, but let's improve that footwork, that finesse. is a pass protector there. Nice couple boosts there. Jordan Miller, let's uh, do his zone corner upgrade there. We're going to be looking for some of those lengthy press corners. Uh, six foot two there. Jordan Miller's got some upside in this scheme. Kadri Allison, I actually want to improve his receiving ability a little bit, uh, just so we feel a little better throwing him the football. Deion Jones, one of our superstars, 
Uh, I'm going to actually go pass coverage. I actually might move him to outside linebacker, depending on if we can bring in more of a traditional thumping middle guy here, get someone closer to that 240 pound mark. Something I think Atlanta's really been missing is some, some girth and strength and physicality in the middle of this defense. Definitely something I want to get back to doing. I think that's something Atlanta really missed the beat on because Seattle, if you're trying to replicate that defense, they've always had some thumpers in there in the middle, whether it's at DT or middle linebacker. Calvin Ridley going to keep developing that route running, uh, hoping to you know, continue his rise to being one of the best route runners in football, maybe have a breakout uh, season to, to get him a superstar dev trait. Not quite there yet. Dante Fowler getting paid a lot of money here. I'm actually going to uh, you know, increase his physicality a little bit here. Talk to him about playing that run a little bit more tough. Uh, getting back to the basics here with this defense. Not trying to be so cute. Uh, let's get these guys to, to beef up and, and play a little more physical. Chris Lindstrom too, same thing, a little bit lighter, you know, under, you know, close to 300 pounds at that guard spot, going with the power upgrade. Going to throw about four more pounds on there as well. Let's let's get bigger. Let's get stronger here, guys. Let's let's get physical for next season. Although one guy we might not want to compromise that speed is going to be Foyasad Aluakun, who's going to be very much playing that traditional coverage linebacker for us. He has a lot of potential here in Atlanta. Gets two zone coverage, one man coverage. Uh, perfect upgrade for him. He is going to stay uh, as a perfect scheme fit as sort of that almost base, like strong safety slot corner, outside linebacker, hybrid position. Um, but don't want to get him in, in so many compromising positions in the run game, certainly. Hayden Hurst, let's beef up that blocking ability. Just really sticking with the theme here uh, with this offseason program. Edo Smith, power back upgrade. Uh, let's get more physical at that running back spot. And we do. Break tackle, trucking, both go up. Uh, as of right now, he's our, he's our lead back heading into next season. And then our last guy here, Julio Jones, who's certainly regressing to be expected. He's getting up there in age, but still a total rock star. Is going to go down to speed. Uh, I'm going to go with the physical upgrade, maybe entering the Larry Fitzgerald uh, ages of his career a little bit more. Gets that stiff arm there. Uh, so we, we have a big decision to make on Julio Jones. I, I think we probably want to bring him back uh, for Matt Ryan and whoever our quarterback's going to be. Uh, but eight players upgraded there automatically. Um, yeah, on, on Julio Jones, you know, he, it's a big contract cap hit to trade him. And he really is going to help out uh, the future all around here, whether it's developing a young quarterback or trying to win in year one, which I'm not ruling out. So another look at the uh, free agent menu. We, we've got some more guys that we get to talk to here. So Charles Harris is up. He wants a one-year, $2.8 million contract, kind of that prove-it year, uh, that first-round pick for the Miami Dolphins several years ago. I'm going to offer that to him, um, but again, we don't have a ton of cap space, so we got to be careful. Uh, he declines it. That might have actually been for the best. Maybe we can get him cheaper on the open market, and nobody else I'm really all that interested in on the back end. I might think about these safeties. Do we maybe franchise tag Keanu Neal? I, I think that might be the best decision here. He wants close to six million a year. Uh, from a coverage standpoint, I just I don't know if I want to commit to a five-year contract like that. I'm gonna offer him like a two-year, ten million dollar contract. Um, he's gonna decline that. Franchise tag would be thirteen point six million dollars. You know what I? I know fans love Keanu Neal because of the big hits, uh, but that's just not a premium position that I really want to commit a lot of cap space to when we're pushed up against the cap already. You can find strong safeties. Hell, we might be able to get him for cheaper on the open market. If we lose him, I'm not going to cry about it. Uh, he just isn't a ideal cover player, even if he fits that traditional strong safety, heavy hitting role in this Seattle three defense. That is a position I think we can find. And Kazee, again, I, I like him, but we still have Allen here, Ricardo Allen. And uh, unless we were to release Ricardo Allen and then give that money to Demonte Kazee, which let's just see if that is reasonable. We would save $6 million in cap space. We could actually pay Kazee and uh, let Allen go. It's something to think about, honestly. Uh, Kazee is a, a very similar player. He's a year younger, 
but I do actually like Kazee a little better than Ricardo Allen at that free safety spot. And he's not asking for a ton, and I actually think that's a fairly reasonable contract for him to ask for three years, uh, about uh, you know four and a half mil. That's not bad at all, actually. It'll take him to age 31. Does just have that normal development, but uh, I'll, I will do that. I'm gonna offer him that contract. He's gonna decline it though, unfortunately. He wants to test somewhere else. So because he doesn't take that, we will just roll with Ricardo Allen. Not the end of the world. It's it's a pretty close push there, even if I like Kazee a little bit better. So rolling the dice with free agency a little bit, letting a lot of guys walk. Gonna wanna take a look at our cuts as well uh, to free up some cap space potentially. And this is also that time we might talk about uh, potentially dealing Matt Ryan. So a pretty obvious cut here, James Carpenter. We will have to incur a cap penalty of 2.4 mil, but it's going to clear up $4 million in cap space. Same deal here with Alan Bailey. He's on the final year of his contract. We'll take that penalty, but we'll clear up a lot of space. Not sure why he was getting so much money there to begin with. But uh, other than those two guys, honestly, not a ton of players that make a lot of sense to release can always revisit it if we feel like we need some more cap space and the the cap space argument alone is, is a good reason not to trade Matt Ryan uh, we'll actually lose 8.5 million dollars in cap space if we were to trade Matt Ryan right now who is regressing hard by the way down to a 77 just that physical talent starting to drop off there but if we were to trade him, we would literally not have any cap space this season, which we might still want to improve this team a little bit in free agency. So we're going to keep Matt Ryan at least for this year. That regression is certainly concerning uh, at that age. Almost going to guarantee we draft a quarterback there with that second overall pick. Uh, but after those releases, it is actually showing $16.4 million in cap space. So that's good. Let's go position by position here. Um, wow, Drew Locke gets straight up released. Not sure what that's all about there. He was pretty bad. I guess they just didn't want him back. Um, Josh Rosen does hit the market. He decides not to come back to Tom Brady. That, to me, is appealing. Uh, he is asking for a pretty hefty contract there. Um, four years, but let's see if we could get him as kind of a backup, kind of shifting the focus a little bit. Three million per year for two years. Um, I think that's actually a pretty good contract for him. He would be a really nice backup to Matt Ryan, could learn from him. Um, so I, I think he, he will like that. Tom Brady did not retire, so uh, going somewhere maybe with some better opportunities and a team maybe a little more actively looking for a quarterback. Uh, these running backs, definitely something we will consider, but not early in free agency like this. We'll revisit that. At the wide receiver spot, a lot of guys hitting the market here. So Antonio Brown, the Giants going after him. Will Fuller does hit the market here. He's not getting any offers. Nelson Aguilar kind of re-returning this year, but we're very deep at this receiver position. Might revisit it here shortly, but um, not for now. Tight end, I, I definitely would like to get more of a blocking type backup. Maybe Vance McDonald would be ideal for that role. Virgil Green, perhaps. Luke Stalker could always bring him back. Um, I am going to make an offer here to Vance McDonald for uh, two years, about 2.7 mil. He does not hate it. On the offensive line, we definitely need a left guard, but other than that, we're actually really young on that group. We got Matthews, we've got Matt Hennessy, uh, Chris Lindstrom with star development, both those guys on the inside. And then Caleb McGarry is fine at right tackle. I don't know if he's gonna hold on to that job forever, but for now, we're all right with it. Uh, so some options here, Forrest Lamp uh, from the Chargers gets uh, hits free agency, Matt Filer. Uh, gets to the market, Pittsburgh letting him go. Kalecki Assemble, uh only wants a one-year contract. He looked good for Kansas City before tearing his ACL, which he has almost fully recovered from. So I'm going to offer him not quite what he's asking for, but $4 million at that left guard spot to round out the offensive line. And then for the defense, 
Uh, I actually like where we're sitting with the D tackles. We've got Davison, we've got Davidson, we've got Grady Jarrett. Edge is definitely somewhere we want to look. At linebacker, we got young Michael Walker, obviously Deion Jones, Aluakun. We could use some depth, but feeling pretty good about where we're at there. We do need a slot corner, um, but I like the two guys on the edge there. They fit the archetype for the Seattle three corner. We've got uh, a big need at strong safety, though. So let's think about that first. Um, so Keanu Neal is getting plenty of offers. Good for him. Go get paid elsewhere. Um, but Carl Joseph, actually an extremely similar player to Keanu Neal, and he isn't asking for nearly as much the Bears are offering there. Something to think about for sure. Sean Williams fits that archetype. J. Ron Curse absolutely fits that archetype. So that's kind of what I, I meant here. You know, there's options here. We could even re-roll the dice on Eric Berry. He is a bigger safety, maybe at his age, less range. But uh, does he want to kickstart his career a little bit? We have seen comebacks crazier than that. Morgan Burnett. Rashad Jones. Josh Jones, who actually was decent in Jacksonville. Like I said, there are Band-Aid options as we look for a more long-term sustainable option at strong safety. I do wonder, though, what Carl Joseph would think of a one-year contract. Uh, it's just not what he wants. The Bears are um, really looking to rejuvenate his career. So we'll, we'll give that up. We just don't have the cap space to play ball there. Um, but Sean Williams, I think, might be the best option here. He's 30 years old. He's still got some juice. Ideal band-aid starter there with a lot of experience. And then I'm going to make an offer to J. Roan Curse as well. So we'll have a little bit uh, of a competition if we can sign both these guys. Both one-year deals, not going to hamstring us too much. We need a slot corner. And uh, Kwan Williams is the perfect answer there. Uh, he's not going to have much of a market here. He played for San Francisco. He knows the scheme. That'd be perfect if we could get him. Uh, and that's going to be all of our cap space. Like I said, man, we are pushing up against it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make those our, our round one offers. We'll see where we're sitting. That is also going to do it for the first episode here. So we'll see when we come back, who we land in the first wave of free agency. I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you're as amped for this series as I am. And if you are, if you enjoyed the episode, please do hit that like button. Share this video with your friends who you think would enjoy um, but until the next episode gets dropped here very soon, we got a double header release launch here on Monday, November 23rd. Um, but until then, guys, cheers, and we'll see you for the next one. Peace out.